Okay, boys and girls, today we're gonna to be talking about five bushcrafting tips in five minutes in the winter when it's snowing. So without any further ado, guys, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe, and let's jump right into it. Okay, so for the sake of brevity, we're gonna get right to this first tip. And the first tip is going to be the mighty spruce tree. This thing is amazingly versatile in the bushcrafting sphere. You can use it for cover, whether you're taking shelter under the tree or taking the tree's boughs to make your cover. You can also make an amazing tea and you can also, to an extent, eat the inner bark or the cambium layer of this tree. Now, if you are going to use the boughs, do make sure that you hit the tree a little bit to try to get some of the uh, snow that is burdened on it off. You don't have to hit it too hard, just a little bit, and then you want to back up because the tree will unload all of its snow directly onto you and your equipment if you're not prepared. But this is the amazing spruce tree, and it is, like I said, extremely versatile. Now let's go on to the next tip. Okay, boys and girls, so the next tip is going to be a better way to use or manufacture birch bark shavings. And this way is pretty quick. I'm sure you guys have seen it in some of my videos. And essentially the idea is to take a knife that has a sharpened spine. And what you can do, especially applicable in the winter when it is cold and you don't want to be, you know, using fine skills to, you know, just shave off small pieces or try to peel off pieces of bark. You can take a birch tree and just run it like this and get lots of nice shavings that are very small in diameter, very easy to start on fire. If you are patient with it, you take your time, you can get a lot of shavings very easily, very rapidly. And the nice thing about doing this kind of shaving method is you get a lot of very small, very fine pieces of shaving that will light on fire very easily. The next tip is going to be what you guys actually just saw, and that is a drop cloth. Now, a drop cloth is an extremely versatile piece of kit, and I love having drop cloths. Whether it's in the summer or whether it's in the winter, drop cloths are great for whether you want a nice and dry place to either kneel down, sit down, or if you want to prepare food, if you want to put something you know, on a place where you know, you know, this is a safe place to put a piece of gear like a knife. You know, you're not going to throw it in the snow and lose it. It's going to stay reasonably dry, very visible. And so drop cloths are great for that reason, but also drop cloths are great for use in collecting things like tinder or like you guys just saw with the birch shavings. If you want to sit down, you know, create a whole bunch of shavings on a pile and be able to collect them easily and not be concerned, you know, if some go over here, some go over here, you know, they're all going to be contained on this larger surface. What you just saw there did actually take a little more than just a minute to make, but for the sake of, for the interest of time and speed, I showed you guys just a little bit of the process of making this but what this essentially is is a dovetail joint for those uninitiated dovetail joints are a field expedient way and a very easy uh, way to make very strong uh, joints essentially whether you want to build a shelter or build a ladder or build something you know that's a little bit smaller maybe you just want to stick to you know roast things over a fire uh, the dovetail joint has many different uses and can be used in you know multiple different capacities it's a very versatile uh, joint and it's reasonably easy to manufacture so that is the fourth tip is the good old dovetail joint now let's jump to the fifth and final tip okay so this fifth and final tip might not be the most exciting but it is the often forgot chest lever now what you guys just saw there was a little bit of a modified chest lever i'm obviously wearing my desert eagle in its chest rig so normally with a chest lever you'd probably want it a little bit higher up like this you know more towards the center line of your chest or your sternum i should say um but obviously being that my a handgun is right in that same kind of vicinity. You're trying to do stuff up here, you know, in the line of the sternum is a little bit more challenging. So I decided to move it down a little bit more towards my, uh, you know, core and uh, my abs. So that still works. Not quite as effective as a lever, but it still is more than sufficient, especially for the small piece of wood that I'm working. Anyways, the chest lever is a very easy way to 
reduce material or to do material reduction very quickly. Uh, with the chest lever, it really does help you put your uh, biceps and triceps into your cut so you will have a lot of uh, force and leverage and you're not trying to push out, you're trying to pull in. And the other nice thing about chest levers is whether you're using a small little Victorinox, like my little farmer here, or you're using a big blade, something, you know, like a fixed blade, you are going to be able to do this just fine. It also doesn't matter if the blade has a lock or no lock, like this little farmer. Uh, this system works with all things. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed these five bushcraft tips in five minutes. Last one is going to be a winter special. You see my snowshoes in the background. I've been wearing them for most of this occasion. One winter special tip that's gonna push us a little bit over five minutes is to pack down your surrounding area with snowshoes. I can't tell you how important this is, especially uh, as a YouTube content creator because I have to uh, you know, make videos around an area, centralized area, but if you pack down your area with your snowshoes, the nice part about that, or doing that, it means that you can walk freely in that area. So long as you pack it down well with your snowshoes, you can walk around freely without snowshoes in that area. This really helps when you don't want to have the bulk and the clumsiness of your snowshoes just around a camp environment. So what I do whenever I go to places that I'm going to be you know, staying at, even if it's just a little while, I will usually try to take the five seconds that it takes to pack down an area and get it all situated. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that extra tip about the snowshoes and winter bushcrafting. As always, guys, God bless, and I am out.